Hey you guys, welcome back for our second show of today. Isn't that voice just angelic? She's sitting right here, you guys. I can't wait to interview her and talk to her. Um, so today's sponsor, again, we're going to give a shout out to my writing business, Specs Custom Writing Services. Um, it's a boutique writing agency specializing in resumes, curriculum vertes, thank you letters, and bios. Check out my website at www.specswriting.com. Calm. So let me tell you about today's guest. You're listening to her right now on the background. This music, this soundtrack, this is all her, you guys. Um, she is an actor, voice actor, and a singer from a small town of, uh, before I mess this up, Paige, Fort Arhochi? No. <laughs> okay, I, I already did it, y'all. <laughs> it's called Fort Oh, Fort Oche. Yeah. Okay. Fort Oche, <laughs> Louisiana. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> she moved to Dallas two years ago. Welcome. And has been involved in multiple film and theater projects. She also began releasing original gospel music in November 2019 and recently launched her voiceover career earlier this year. She has a background in television and is a proud graduate of Louisiana State University. Shouts out to y'all. And she's also a member of Dallas Actors of Color. And outside of acting, she enjoys traveling, cooking Cajun and Creole dishes dishes with her husband, Justin. So you guys, welcome Paige Gullery. Is it Gullery? Gillery. Gillery. Close. Close. I'm trying, <laughs> y'all. So hey, Paige. Hi. That, what we're hearing right now, is called Everything to Me. Mm. I like that song. It's so sweet. Thank it's you. It's very nice. She has a really pretty voice. So how you doing with everything that's going on with the um, the COVID and everything? How are you and your husband adjusting? We're doing okay. Um, we're blessed. We have uh, the ability to work from home during this time. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of being indoors, and but we're still productive and okay. getting stuff done. So we're trying to limit our interaction as possible when we go out. We try to you know just sit outside, mm -hmm. um, wear our mask, and just adhere all of the guidelines but mm -hmm. yeah you know mm -hmm. we're, we're blessed okay okay good good so um i like the song by the way thank you and i listened to a few of your songs on youtube so you guys check out on youtube how long have you been singing and performing so i have been singing probably since i was about six years old I started out you know singing in the youth choir my whole family sings so mm -hmm. it's it was kind of like inevitable for me to get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I, I got into singing with my family, my mom pushing me to, you know, sing in the church, sing in the youth choir. And then after that, I began singing, um, you know, in my high school choir. And then when I, you know, when there were talent shows or pageants, I would push myself to use singing as my talent. So I sang for pageants. And um, I was always more so... I like to be in the background. I like to blend in. Um, so choir, I felt comfortable. But when it was time to lead a solo, I always kind of got mm -hmm. a little nervous. Yeah. But um, I would say last year is when I really decided, hey, like I have this gift. God gives you these gifts for a reason for you to use them. If you don't use them, you can lose them. So I decided to take a leap of faith and release my own music. Okay. All right. So, you know, how does that feel when you just like, when you came to that, conclusion like what was the the thought process behind that because I always like to know when people say you know what this is this is it I'm gonna do this right like what was what was that like can you t walk us through like that yeah. moment for you certainly um so I was attending church at Irving Bible Church and um there was somebody in the church and he could hear me like singing and he was just like hey like you have a beautiful voice I don't know who this guy was just you know a stranger but um he told me that and then after that I was like you know what like I I do have a voice like I have a gift you know and I I should I should pursue this and so I was talking to my husband and I was like hey like maybe I should try to release my own music you know and I feel like when it comes to any genre of music I sound the best when I sing for the Lord mm -hmm. so I was like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get some music and then I, I went home and I got my notebook out 30 minutes later I had my first song done it was completed I had it written and so then after that I started writing more music and I came up with like three solid songs that I 
that I knew that I wanted to record. So I reached out to a producer that I knew who was in San Antonio, and we just worked together. He's he's in the church, too. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Eddie Versatile Keys. That's what he goes by. He's at Music Warehouse Studio. And I connected with him, and it was just like a match made in heaven. Like, everything just came together. He knew exactly what I wanted, um, and he really helped me. And together, we were able to create something very special. How important is it to have, like, a producer? Because a lot of people in, in the industry work with tons of producers Mm -hmm. and how like vital is to that it was far vital that is to the process of you getting this project done it's super important because what I envisioned was not the outcome it was actually like he like exceeded my expectations Mm. um so I just what what I did because you know sometimes like people like come like with a little bit of like a, a beat in mind mm-hmm. or like they they get a producer to give them their beat first and then they go write the music to that beat all i had was a notebook of lyrics i i knew like the direction i wanted to go in but as far as the music coming together like i knew like what type of sound i wanted but i just i, I don't know anything about producing music so i just said hey eddie like here's the lyrics this is the vibe that I'm going for. I sang the song for him a couple of times. I told him what I wanted. And it's just like a day later, he had something. And I was mm-hmm. like, whoa, like this is like exactly what I wanted, but it's like better. So if it was not for him, yeah. it wouldn't have happened. And I, I think he was the right person, the perfect person for this project. So I'm super grateful. Um, I mean, yeah, he made my vision come to life. So it's very important to have a good producer, a producer that you trust, a producer that um, will take your vision to the next level. That's mm-hmm. what he did. Okay. Okay. So when you launched your singing career, did you have any, I'm not going to say doubts, but what, you know, did you weigh like any, like the pros and the cons? Did you get jitters? And how would you, I always like to, you know, mm-hmm. inspire people that, you know, listen. So how would you tell someone to like work through that if there is any yeah. kind of like, because your mind will sometimes tell you something and, and then you're like, listen, no, this is it. But it, it can go both ways. But how would you, how did you move through that? And how would you advise someone else to move through that? Because this is a big deal. It, it Yeah, it, it's definitely, it was definitely a challenge, I would say, especially for me. Like I said, I was always the type of person to want to be in the background. I never imagined myself actually being in the forefront and producing my, you know, an album. And so that's something that I that I struggled with is actually bringing myself to the forefront cuz I I sometimes I get like performance anxiety, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm really I tense up, I'm nervous. I, you know, I sometimes I shake when I'm singing and you know, I, I think about other people's judgment, but you know, I realize that I'm not I'm not doing this for um you know, for the applause, you know, of, of other people. Like, I'm doing, uh, this has a, a different type of purpose, you know? It's not to please others. It's to please God and hopefully inspire somebody. That's mm-hmm. what I want to do. I want to inspire somebody, maybe change somebody's life. You know, maybe they're going through something and I'm, my music can get them through it. So even though I was super nervous and I, I still battle with nerves, I knew that this project served a greater purpose. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I pushed through it, and I, I did it. Okay. Do you, so, you know, um, I'm, like, a lot of the, the the Christian music that I've listened to um, was more so from back in the day, and then, you mm-hmm. know, Kurt Flank, it came out. And then, you know, it's, it's like, with the, with the, the Christian sec- sector and gospel music, um, how... You know, is that is there are there any differences um, with like uh, how people m- move differently with R and B? Because I always mm-hmm. kind of get that yeah. kind of confused. Somebody, because I'm just you know not in the music inter- industry, but how does that work um, with like building yourself up and, and and things of that sort? Is it does it is it kind of like the same process or? Well, they were there's more. Um you know, gospel, and then there's also contemporary, you know, and so I would say my music is more on the contemporary side. Okay. Um, my, I, I try to incorporate a little bit of, you know, gospel in there, 
but I would say it's more of, of a contemporary, you know, album. Mm-hmm. Um, for gospel, it's it's definitely, I would say your vocal ability has to be like really, really wide because you're hitting some really big notes um, when it comes to gospel music and you're letting the spirit lead you. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I let the spirit lead me in this in this album too. But as far as like my vocal ability, I, I try to show what I can do, but I also try to stay in my wheelhouse of what I'm comfortable in doing. And I just felt like con- the contemporary was more of a match for my voice. Okay. Okay. Do you think that music has changed over time um, as far as the genre of Christian music? Yeah. um, So I I see like a lot of people, a lot of artists do adding more of a rock influence to the Mm -hmm. Christian music. Um, And I also see more contemporary, you know, music, you know, becoming mainstream as well. So growing up, you know, I listened to a lot of gospel music. And as I got older, I find myself listening to more, you know, contemporary Christian music and it's being played on the radio Mm -hmm. and, you know, Spotify and all of that. So it it is changing. Um, So it seems like contemporary is becoming, you know, more mainstream these days. Yeah. Yeah. Who did you grow up listening to? Oh, gosh, I grew up listening to so many artists thinking about like seeing in church. Um, Kirk Franklin, Mahalia Jackson. Aretha Franklin, um, Tasha Cobbs, listen to a lot of her, Leandria Johnson, she's amazing, uh, Marvin Sapp, uh, there's just so many great artists that I grew up listening to, um, Rance Allen, I believe that's his last name, oh, he's amazing, he made that song, uh, something about the name Jesus, um, you know, I- I think I remember that briefly. Yeah. So I I, I, lis- I grew up listening to a lot of a lot of soulful mm-hmm. artists. So- <laughs> soulful artists. Soulful yeah. artists. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like the Clark sisters and pretty much everybody yeah. that you uh just named. Um uh, Shirley Caesar. Cannot yeah. forget <laughs> yeah, right. Cannot yeah, forget Pastor really Shirley Caesar. Yeah. She's yeah. really good. Did you so when you write your music, because I, I always like I'm one of those people that when people can do something that I can't, I'm so fascinated by it. <laughs> so when, what space do you have to be in to write your music? Do you have to say, do you, are you in a quiet room? Does something happen where you jot things down? Okay. Like, what happens? Uh, do you really want to know? Yeah. Usually, <laughs> usually these... These ideas come to me while I am taking a bath. Okay, I'm that's the, a good relaxing I'm in place. the bathtub. I'm relaxing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, usually my best ideas come to me yeah. when I'm taking a bath. So the initial idea, the, the thought process comes to me then. And then after that, I like to maybe go outside and just yeah. sit outside and just start writing. And, yeah, yeah, that's my vibe. Okay, okay. And did you have any type of... Um, like training and writing because this it seems like there's some type of art to writing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you have the chorus and the songs and people like me only know the chorus. You know, like when you started writing, how do you know like this is it? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I do have a background in writing. Um shout out to LSU, Louisiana State University. I majored in mass communication, concentration, broadcast journalism, so I always love writing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of my background. I started out in news, so I did a lot of that. And, um, yeah, I used to write poetry as a kid, short stories. Okay. And now I do music sometimes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you also act as well. Yeah. All right. How long have you been performing? So professionally, and I mean seriously, you know, taking myself seriously, I've been acting for two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you decide, you know, because you're pretty much all things art, you know? Thank you. With acting, singing, writing. Um, What made you decide, you know what, I'm going to uh, pursue my acting career as well? Well, I've always had a passion for television, you know, in general. So that was one of the reasons why I majored in broadcast journalism. It was because I was just like in awe of like TV and the storytelling that goes into it. So that's why I thought, you know, you know, um, broadcast would be great, you know, because I get to tell a story. 
and I get to be on TV while I mm-hmm. do it. So it was just such a great learning experience for me. Um, but yeah, so just got s- started like in kind of like an early age, got into some, you know, into drama, you know, the drama club. And mm-hmm. then after that, I started doing um, a couple of like high school theater projects and stuff like that. And then I just kind of like blossomed like two years ago. I just I, I decided to take myself seriously. And I'm like, you know what? This is something that I'm really passionate about. And I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. And that's what I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what type of roles do you d- genuinely go for? So I genuinely go for the roles that are fit for me, which are the teen roles. Okay. <laughs> so like, you know, like between 15 to I would say I'm generally getting called for like 15 15 to 20 okay maybe sometimes 14 yeah so yeah I want to play older Mm -hmm. but uh right now I'm kind of in that in-between phase where like I'm not able to like really um book roles that are like for my actual age so Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to connect with my younger self and you know when I'm doing those types of auditions yeah okay all right how do you prepare for a role? Okay. So there's a lot that, that goes into preparing for your role. First, you want to read your you read your script, um, read the size that, that you were given, and you want to make sure you're memorized. So I like to get familiar with my lines, make sure I'm memorized. Um, there's different techniques that people use to memorize their lines. What works for me is recording myself like and leaving room for – like me saying the other person's part, and then I'll leave room like space for my part. Mm-hmm. And after I feel comfortable and I know my lines, then I start analyzing everything, breaking down my character, breaking down the script, coming up with an objective of what is my goal for this entire scene. What do I want most from the person who's in this scene with me? And just doing all that I can to achieve that goal achieve that objective for my scene Mm -hmm. okay so yeah okay do you like i mean i know it's like is it like it is is it like it is on tv where you go and it's the panel of people and they're looking at you and well it it depends because like um there's there, there are the self tapes. Okay. You know, those are super popular. They've always been popular, but like now they're super popular because coronavirus, and they don't want you going in for all of these auditions. So they, so more um, casting directors are allowing you to self tape. Yeah, that's so good. So when it comes to a self tape, I mean, you're not nervous. I mean, I, I'm not nervous. Right. I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm not nervous because I'm in the comfort of my home or wherever I am taping at. So I don't necessarily have to be in front of that casting director's face. Mm-hmm. But whenever you are called into the room, sometimes there's the, the casting director and the director there. Um, and there could be, like, the casting assistant there. And, yeah, sometimes you you really get nervous. I, mm-hmm. I do sometimes. So I'm trying to work on that. But, yeah, there you just walk in and you slate, which is, like, your name, where you're based, your height. And then you go into your role and they are um, analyzing everything that you do. They are recording you. And then after that, you leave. You okay. don't really get any kind of critique. Sometimes they do, like, most times, like, they will adjust you. Like, if they see, like, you're you're doing something, but they just want to see how you take direction, they mm-hmm. will give you some, you know, critiques and see how you perform then. But then after that, you're gone, and you just play the waiting game. You're waiting to see if they're going to call you back. If they're not, mm-hmm. you don't hear anything. You know that's a no. So you don't really get told no in this business. It's just like silence. You don't hear anything. So you have to take that as your no. Okay. Um, <laughs> speaking of the no's, how do you handle re- rejection? Does it, you know? <laughs> I'm getting better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, I mean. <laughs> It's a, I think everybody, like, it, 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 within their industry, there's a form of it, you know? Yeah. So. It's, I mean, honestly, like, okay, so I've, I've been wanting to, to do, pursue acting for so long. And um, during that time, like, you know, as a teen, as a child, like, I knew it was something that I wanted to do. But 
as I became older and I actually started putting the work in and I realized how hard I am working at this. Because back then I wasn't working hard. It was just a dream. You yeah. know, now it's an actual goal. I have a, a plan of action. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, now that I'm working so hard and you 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 do so many auditions and, like, the amount that the amount of bookings that you get to the amount of auditions you're receiving and going on, you know, they just they don't compare. You know, you're gonna yeah. get way more no's than yeses. And initially, when I first began to take myself seriously, like it really kind of hurt. I'm yeah. like, I wanted that role so bad. And there have been roles that like. I audition for, and then I go look on Netflix one day, and I see the person who got that role. And yeah, you're like, eh, and I'm just yeah. like, man, like yeah. I could have done that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, what's for you is for you. That's can true. can nobody take that away? Yeah. If it's for you, so that's what I realized. I, I mean, hey, like that wasn't for me. That was for them. You mm-hmm. know, kudos to them. That is their blessing. But that was not for me. God has something in store for me, yeah. right? So that's the way I have to kind of look at it and like, you know, and, and also just because you didn't get the role doesn't mean you're not talented. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're not good. It just means that you weren't fit for that role. They found somebody who was a better fit. They could have had a different eye color that they were looking for. Mm-hmm. They could have had a, a different style hair, you know. They could have been a little older looking, a little younger. You know, it, it's just so many factors that go in that might not even be um, you know, affected by like your actual talent. Yeah. You know? So you just have to take into everything and realize that what's for you is for you and you just keep putting in the work and it's gonna come. Yeah, that's a that's a really good attitude um to have. And that way, you know, it, it does take like a, a hundred no's where you get that one yes, but mm-hmm. that one yes it just can be it can be it, you know. Success overnight. Yeah, know? yeah. So that's a really good attitude to have, and the the attitude alone will will get you where you're trying to go, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, what have you learned about yourself, like as far as acting? Because you do have to, like you know, like you said, you have to, you know, kind of immerse yourself into these roles. Mm-hmm. And then there is, of course, you know, the rejection aspect, working with other people aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you learned about yourself? Like, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know this about me. You know, mm-hmm. has there anything you've kind of discovered? Let's see. Um, I discovered that I have, to, like, in order to get my scenes out, sometimes I have to really like create a toolbox for myself and like put all these different life experiences that I've had into this and I have to be able to access them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like, cause you draw from your personal experiences, at least that's what, you know, I'm being taught in, in the technique that I use. Mm -hmm. I draw from personal experiences and I didn't realize that like I have a lot of, you know, different experiences that I can pull from that I can use when it comes to my acting and it's not even about if this matches perfectly like if your personal experience matches perfectly from the scene like you can use pieces of your personal experience to go with pieces of the scene Mm -hmm. so it's all about just learning like I've, I've learned so much of like my ability and then also when it comes to voice acting what I did not know was that like this is actually a career and this is something that I was being trained to do without even realizing that God was setting me up for this. Mm-hmm. And I, I just started like really going hard at it and pursuing it this year. But when I think back to when I was a little girl growing up in Fort Oche, Louisiana, small country town, um, my grandmother, we would watch cartoons together and she would always have me impersonate a voice mm-hmm. on those cartoons. And I could just nail it to the T back then. And I didn't realize, like, hey, like, I could be that voice one day. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? And then when I got into to news, you know, I enjoyed storytelling. I, mm-hmm. I enjoyed voicing my news stories. Mm-hmm. It was one of my favorite things to do was to hop in the edit bay and voice my news story. And I did, and, and and even till that day, it never clicked. Like, hey, 
this is actually, you know, can be a yeah. whole separate career. Like yeah. you, you can voice cartoons, commercials. you can voice commercials, mm-hmm. you can do audio books, like, and you like this. So like, do it. Yeah. So I, I really learned that about myself. Like, I, like all of the things that I used to, you know, the things that I love that I didn't think were careers you know it actually is yeah so yeah yeah Yeah. i'm learning so much yeah it's always good to find like your passion within you know a financial uh aspect as far as like i can make money doing something i really really love and really really enjoy doing um how does how do the two contrast and compare with voice acting Mm -hmm. And, um, like, or, or, you know, on camera or mm-hmm. where it was like a live theater troupe. Like, how do they compare and contrast? Okay, so the biggest comparison, I would say, between acting and voice acting is that you are still analyzing your script. You know, you receive a, a script when you're, when you're on TV and whether you're just behind the microphone in, the, in your sound booth. You're going to receive a script and you have to analyze that. You have to know what is the purpose? What is your objective? Who is your audience? So you have to break down that script for voice acting just like you would break down that script for film or television. Um, And then the biggest difference would be the performance. Mm -hmm. Um, Even, But also it's similar because when I'm voicing in the sound booth, I'm not just Hey, I'm Paige Gillard. Like, I'm not just talking. Like, I'm animated. You know, I have to perform to get it out. Just like I'm performing if I'm on TV, you know, I'm performing. I'm not just being still. But at the same time, when it comes to voice acting and acting, your performance is different because there's a camera in front of you when you're acting. And when you're voice acting, there is no camera. So it's just you and the microphone. So for me... Um, it's it's easier when it comes to voice acting, not knowing that people are there. But that's also, you know, why I need to work harder in acting because even though people are there, like I, I can't focus on those people. I have to be committed to my scene. And, you know, as I continue training and stuff like that, it's going to get better. I'm going to be more comfortable. But right now I would say I'm a little bit more comfortable with voice acting. Okay. 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 Um, what would you say is the most challenging thing about being an actress? Probably the inconsistency. Like, you don't know when you're going to get an audition. It's a blessing to even get an audition, you know? And so for that time that you had that audition, that's your role, you know, for, for those few minutes. Yeah. But it's just you don't know when the audition is going to come, especially right now during this time it's a dry season for a lot of actors so i you know i'm i'm blessed that i do have a a day job that allows me to you know work remote Mm -hmm. but you know for some people if you're acting is your full time job there's you know there's no money coming in right so it's that's the thing it's just you know inconsistency you don't know when the next audition is coming and yeah. you don't know if you're going to book it. You just got to give it your best. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say, like, you know, you're doing your acting, your voice acting, you have your music out. What is next post COVID? <laughs> post COVID. Let's speak it into existence. Right. The end yes. of this whole thing is coming soon y'all. yeah wear the mask yeah please just stay protected and keep your six feet yeah but um after after covid um i really want to i mean even during covid I'm, st- I'm still focusing on my voice acting right now because i'm in ongoing training for acting right now mm-hmm. and i also uh just started my ongoing training for voice acting mm-hmm. so i just want to keep Keep training, you know, Mm -hmm. stay, stay in it because like, it's just like when you go to the gym, you're, you know, you have to keep in, keep stay in the gym to get those results. Like you have to stay in the acting gym too, which is your classes. So I'm going to stay in these classes and I, I just produced my voiceover demo. I have another demo that I'm working on too for voiceover and just try to get more into that. Start marketing because as a voice actor, you have to market yourself too. Mm -hmm. So I want to get more into to marketing for my voice acting and just keep 
keep going hard with the acting and voice acting. As far as music, if the spirit leads me to start writing some more music, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fight it at all. But I'd, I'd, right now, I want to focus on voice acting and acting. Okay. All right. Well, um, before we wrap up everything, I do Hey DFW's Top 5 with everybody at the end of each show, which is pretty much like 20 questions, but five questions, just small little okay. short answer questions. So, number one, if you could co-star with anyone, who would it be? Oh, man. <gasps> Viola Davis. Okay. I love All right. her. Yeah, she's yeah. a really good actress. I like her, too. Um, if you could do a singing duo with someone, who would it be? Hmm. Whitney. If we can bring back Whitney, Whitney Houston. I she is the voice. She is. So I yes, mean, I would pick Whitney yeah. Houston. Okay. Um, what's your favorite Creole dish? Oh, gumbo. Yeah. Cat, cat, grease, cat likes gumbo. You know, I don't like the okra, y'all. Am I bad? <laughs> no. What about some dirty rice? I love oh, dirty rice. We just had dirty rice. Mm, yeah. Really. Okay. My um, husband is like a chef. Okay. So, like, yeah. Okay. Gumbo. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And see, and I like that okra. The little seeds that pop out. Mm, it's I, everything. I, mm, my mama like it. <laughs> I love it too. I smother okra. It's so good. I just, I can't. I just, it, it still looks, looks slimy. <laughs> that's all That's all I see. That's all I see. Um, if you could play anyone in like a real life true story about their life, oh. who would it be? Ooh. I don't know. I've, I know. <laughs> that's so hard. Well, if you could just play anyone. Okay. You know, or... I, I, I would I would go okay. for Rosa Parks. All right. Yeah. I can see how the Rosa Parks roll. You can see that cat. Yeah. yeah, I, would yeah for Rosa. I would love to see you know, that. It's funny because I, I, was, I was thinking old school like that, too. I was thinking more along the lines of, like, Norma Jean, just because you're so cute Isn't and she dainty. cute? I Thank told you. them before she got here. So she's yeah. so cute, y'all. Yeah. You're very cute and dainty. But I yeah. like the Rosa Parks. Thank That's cute, you. too. Okay, and so I do like a series. Like I'm trying to like do like a theme with like Hey DFW, just like for the times and you know um, that things are going on. And the last theme was when we first got on lockdown was QT with Aaron J. So it's quarantine time with Aaron J. But I was trying it for QT time, and so now it's leveling it up. So what advice would you give someone that wants to level up? Mm -hmm. and pursue their dreams, pursue their passion, what would you what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them to turn your dream into a goal. Ooh. And what I mean by a goal is to have a plan of action, how you're going to achieve that. And also write it down so you can hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of goals for 2020, and I wrote them all down and you can actually, you know, go back and review those to remind you of what you set for yourself and you can check those off and it feels good checking off a goal. Yeah, it so, does. So, yeah, I would I would I would encourage a, a, anybody to write down your goals and have a plan of action of how you're going to achieve those goals and make sure you're doing do like at least something every week towards your goal. Mm -hmm. I try to do something every day toward acting or voice acting whether it's reading a book whether it's watching a movie and analyzing these actors on their acting but just do make sure you're doing something every week towards your goal okay all right y'all heard that y'all better do it all right so um can you tell everybody where to find you where to follow you and to download your music yeah, so you can follow me at Paige V. Guillory on Instagram. You can also follow my Facebook page, Paige Guillory. And my music is on all of the streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music. It's on YouTube, too. So, yeah. All right, you guys. And when I upload this to YouTube, I'll put her links at the uh, the bottom of the video as well. So you can just click on it. All right. So that is it for our show. Thank you so much for tuning in to the second show of the day. Um, and if you want to follow me, it's Hey DFW on all social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.